Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's session, we are going to learn how you can create a tabbed form in Power Apps. So consider a scenario where your SharePoint list is having 50 columns and you want to represent those uh, 50 columns from to users so that they can input the data. So it would be very difficult for them to view the form entirely in one screen itself. So the solution could be we can create a tabbed uh, this form and every tab would contain few set of columns and uh, it would be very easy for, for users to fill out those lengthy lengthy forms. So I've created one partner list form to demo that out to you. If I click on new, it it is having around 10, 10 to 12 columns but still like looks like, like a bit lengthy. So we have we need to make a scroll to go to the end of these columns. So the same form we are going to customize in Power Apps so that it can have it can be represented in tabs and it could be uh, from UI perspective it could be a, a right way to fill out the details. So now I will customize the form from here itself. Customize forms. So now I got my form open in this power app. Now I'll just simply add the all the fields which I want. So I'll just click on add fields and keep on checking whatever fields I would like to have in this form. So I want all these business fields. I'll just click on add. So I got all my fields added to this form and now I'll just snap to the columns. Uh, not snap to the columns actually I'll change the layout to represent two columns and in a vertical fashion. So you can keep it horizontal as well to represent it more like a form. So that's how you can keep it. Now, as I uh, said that I'll be creating tabs in this form so that we can have uh, one tab can have a couple of fields, the other can have a other set of fields. So I'll just uh, move this form a bit down so that I can have space for having tabs and I'll just zoom it out so that I can show you that properly. Now you can see I have that top, top space where I would be having adding header and header for this form and as well as the tabs. So I'll just go to the insert label and I'll just uh, move that label up a bit top so that I can say what this form name is. I'll just say partner form. And uh, we'll just provide some background so that it should be look like a header. And increase the font size. Alright. Font weight I'll just say bold because it's a heading. So now the other part is to create tabs. So I'll add one more label which can work as a background for those tabs and I'll just move this label a bit down and again provide the, the background for this so that we can distinguish between the tabs and I'll just give a light background and remove the text heading because we don't want this to have anything this will just work as a background for my tab buttons now the next step would be adding buttons i'll just add one button and in this this button i'll just keep on this this label which we created in previous tab and now i'll start giving the styles to this button so that it can look like a tab so first thing is i would give the round corners to it so that it can have the 
uh, curly corner and look like a tab so I'll just give a round corner to 10 so now it's having this round corners and again I'll change the heading for this uh, as tab 1 and now because uh, this lab uh, label I have to like move it front so I'll just reorder it to make it to bring it forward so that it can trip off this button now it looks like a tab but the text is a bit uh, trimmed off so I'll just move the alignment of this button so that it can show the uh, text uh, clearly I'll just uh, move the alignment the vertical alignment this vertical alignment stop now it looks like a tab I'll just uh, move this label a bit down again so that it can clearly be visible now I'll just provide the uh, few settings to this tab so that it can work in the expected way so I'll just go to the first of all on select of this button what should be done so on select I'll just set up one variable and that variable will keep the value for this selected tab so I'll just set variable let's say variable tab and I'll set up the value as tab1 so whenever this button would click then this variable where tab would be set up with the tab1 value and the same thing I because I want this tab to be defaultly selected so I'll just go to the this app setting and on start I'll set up this variable again so that whenever this uh, form would be launched and the default tab would be always tab1 so now I'll come to the visibility setting uh, not the visibility but the display setting of this uh, this uh, button so that whenever a person is clicking this button this button should get disabled because if, if we are already selecting this tab then this should be grayed out and other tabs should be visible so I'll just go to the display mode and instead of add it I'll add up one condition if if my variable tab equal to tab1 then it should be disabled otherwise it should be added a simple condition I have added so whenever this button would be clicked this would be disabled and other button would be enabled and I am just setting this up now we are done with this uh, this tab settings now I want more tabs to be in, to be involved in this uh, screen, so I'm just copying this tab because we already did the did the setting for this button, so we can just copy and paste it, so that we can use this for the other tabs. So you need to just uh, be cautious with the UI of this app controls and the distancing. So I'm just uh, moving the other button as well. So I'll right now I'll just do with three buttons all right so now I'll just uh, change the text for this at uh, tab 2 and this is tab 3 and I'll change the variable on select variable as well because whenever this tab would be clicked this should set the variable as tab 2 and whenever this tab 3 is clicked it should set the variable as tab 3 and I'll just move this control uh, the label again forward so that it can trim the text now I'll do the alignment for it vertical alignment as we did for the other one okay so it's already top because it actually got the settings from the copied tab I'll just move them a bit now these are properly aligned and of course the spacing you can set it up based on your requirement so now I'll just go to the tab 2 to set up the uh, uh, variable so I think like we have already done that let's just quickly verify so we have already done that we need to just go to the display setting display mode of it to change the formula so whenever this tab 2 
variable has is having tab 2 then it should disable it otherwise it should keep in edit mode and the same thing we are going to do for this tab 3 we'll just find out the display setting display mode mm -hmm. and if this tab variable is 3 then it should disable the tab 3 now comes the part where what fields we would like to belong to tab 1 so whenever a person clicks on tab 1 what field should be displayed so for that we'll be just selecting the field so for example i have selected this title data card and i'll just go to the visible setting of it so by default is true but now we are going to change that to the var tab so that whatever var tab is returning should set to the visible visibility so in instead of true i'll set up the condition which should return true or false so what i'll do is i'll just use the variable tab and if it's equal to tab 1 I need to check what we have set on select it's tab 1 without space then we should be just setting the visibility of this control to tab 1 so we just uh, did for title but uh, because uh, this title we lost it due to visibility setting so I'll just remove the spaces so we are all done so in this again I would like to have this var tab if var tab equal to tab 1 then it should visible otherwise it should be hidden and same thing for address var tab equal to tab 1 otherwise it should be hidden next set of these fields I want to be under the tab 2 so I'll just select the approve uh, approver field and I'll go to the visibility and change the visibility when var tab equal to 2 so I'll just go to the visibility visib and var tab equal to and I'll do the rest of the stuff for remaining controls as well var tab equal to visibility 2 and now this one is for tab 3 so I'll just set the visibility for the var tab 3 so that this finance related stuff should be visible under the tab 3 I'm just setting that as tab 3 this name name should be under my tab 1 so I'll set the visibility for tab 1 and point of contact so this point of contact person uh, you can just set up the the visibility or the wrapping on this so that it's not visible you can just go down and then wrap it off because it's having long this title caption so you can just do that for long uh, labels as well so that it can just wrap it up so for this point of contact I'm setting the visibility for tab 3 and the same the total cost I'm setting again for the tab 3 trigger what is that trigger column trigger windows I think like we don't need that column so that's how we can set it up and under this web tab why it's not hidden because we by mistake we set that for height but we need to do that for visibility right so right now you can see all the tabs are having nothing and why that's so because by default are uh, this uh, uh, variable is not set up and as you as I did in in the starting session that we set it up the variable tab as tab 1 by default so now you can save it and now you go to the publish to share point I'm just opening that list and I need to refresh the list and if I click on new it should load up that form 
Yeah, so now you can see we have this header, we have this tab one as disabled because by default the fields related to this tab one are visible. Title, partner name, address, all this. And if I click on tab two, then it displays the another set of fields which is though like it's trimmed off because we did not um, bother about the UI, but this approved by this contractor's name and the contractor's detail. And the tab three, we have the fields related to the finance point of contact, point of the total mm -hmm. contract cost, and the finance point of contact. So this is how you can create this uh, tabbed forms, and you can split out your uh, lengthy lengthy fields in these sections, and uh, could be handy for users to fill out fill it out. Otherwise, in all the fields in a single uh, form would have like lot of scroll for them, and could be confusing as well. So I hope uh, this could add a value add to your this Power Apps knowledge, and you may use this concept while creating some real-time applications. That's it for now. Thank you.